One year ago this week, an obscure Republican congressman named Todd Akin introduced the phrase legitimate rape into the national conversation. It seems to me, first of all, from what I understand from doctors, that's really rare. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. The comments legitimate rape exposed the right wing's extreme views on women's rights and ended Mr. Aiken's career. But somehow, Republicans just couldn't help themselves. They kept weighing in on this topic. I think even when life begins in that horrible situation of rape, that it is uh, something that God intended to happen. God intended it to happen. Comments like that crushed Republicans in 2012. The RNC's autopsy of the loss said Republicans shouldn't start using language that addresses concerns that are on women's minds in order to let them know we are fighting for them. So how's that been working out for them? Take a look at what Republicans have been saying in the months since. We don't want a country where abortion is simply outlawed. We want a country where it isn't even considered. How did America get so mediocre? It, you know, I think parents became, both parents started working, and, and a mom is in the workplace. It's not about pay equity laws sense. to ensure that women are treated fairly in the workplace. I think that more important than that, it is making certain that women are recognized by those companies. That is what women want. What about you? They don't want the decisions made in Washington. Actually, I think women are fine with decisions made in Washington. If those decisions protect their rights, one year after the, le the legitimate rape debacle, Republicans are still a party without a clue. Joining me now is Elise Hogue, president of NARAL, Pro-Choice America. Thanks for being here, Elise. Thank you for having me, Reverend. Elise, has the, has the right learned anything since Todd Aiken crashed and burned last year? I mean, I think the evidence is clear that they have not. This is such a problem for the party that they sent their House GOP members through a training about not talking about rape. And yet what we're saying is the problem is not in what they say, it's in what they believe. And that's had disastrous effects at the state legislature this year. Seventy percent of abortion restrictions passed this year have no exception for rape. Think about that. You've got a woman in the most vulnerable point in her entire life. She's just experienced the unimaginable, and she's got men telling her what she can and cannot do as, as she moves forward through this trauma. It's yeah. unconscionable, and it's not in line with where most of the country is. Most of the country overwhelmingly supports exceptions for rape, regardless of where they stand on the abortion issue itself. You know, new abortion restrictions enacted this year hurt victims of sexual assault. The vast majority, 71% of new abortion restrictions enacted in the first half of 2013 don't include any kind of exception for pregnancies that result from rape. These restrictions force a woman who has been raped to carry a rapist baby to term, be denied insurance coverage for an abortion, be forced to undergo an evasive ultrasound, an invasive ultrasound, and even listen to the fetal heartbeat. How is this any different from Todd Aiken's dismissive comments last year, Elise? Well, we're not. What we're seeing is this is a pervasive disease throughout the party. And instead of trying to root it out and actually understand what women need in terms of policies that support us, not just at these horrible times in our lives, but what about when we want to become parents? The party's not there for us either. There is no real equal pay. There is no paid sick days to take care of our children. So, you know, this is going to be a pro It is a problem for them. It's been a problem for for them. We're seeing it in the diving poll numbers of Senator McCrory in North Carolina because of the restrictive bill he just signed on abortion. And I think it's going to continue to hound them until they understand this isn't about window dressing. It's actually about sub substantively meeting women where we need to be met in today's America.
Now, you know, uh, let, me, let me take you on a little uh, journey on my map on what the right wing is doing on women's uh, health rights. Uh, some of the laws that are attacking women's health rights in 2013. Virginia, it requires uh, re abortion clinics meet strict hospital building codes. Alabama requires admitting privileges for doctors. Arkansas, 12-week abortion ban. North Dakota, six-week abortion ban. Strictest law in the nation, by the way. Kansas has a personhood bill that would criminalize abortion, stem cell research, and even certain forms of contraception. Republican claims there's no war on women, but GOP lawmakers are trying to roll back abortion rights all over the country, Elise. Absolutely. We're seeing an unprecedented assault at the state level. This is where they think they can chip away at the rights. But it's important, Reverend, now that your viewers understand that we just fought hard and won for the rape exception for service women who have been experiencing terrible sexual, sexual assault in the military. And this is a right that Peace Corps volunteers don't even enjoy now. So the rights assault on women at the state level has terrible effects as it resonates up the food chain. And we've got to make sure that our entire elected officials understand that we can, we are women who should be trusted to make our own decisions with our families, our doctors, and our gods. That is not to be legislated by some politician who's currying favor with an extreme base. Elise Hogue, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you, Reverend.